Ah yes, the elusive jetpack. Ever since its original debut in 2004's GTA San Andreas, it has been a fan favorite vehicle in the franchise. With the release of GTA V came the Mount Chiliad mystery, which led tons to believe that there was a secret way to unlock this vehicle in the single player mode, but that wasn't the case. Fast forward to 2017, and we saw the release of the jetpack in what could have been cut single player content that was repackaged into an online update. Regardless, it is here, and it is here to stay. Now, the initial reaction of the jetpack, or as it's called in GT Online, the Mammoth Thruster, was not a very positive one. It was kind of overshadowed by the Deluxo, which made its GT Online debut on the same exact day. For me, obviously, I think it's an amazing vehicle that is super underrated, otherwise I wouldn't be making this expert guide. When you purchase the jetpack, it comes very bare bones, but can be upgraded a good amount. Obviously, you want to upgrade the armor and the engine. When it comes to countermeasures, I recommend the chaff just because the only missiles you will have to worry about in this vehicle are the top tier tracking ones, which are only found on vehicles that can spam missiles non-stop, so flares are not going to help you here regardless. But we will discuss a tactic later into the video to help defend against those missiles as well. In the weapons category, you have two options, machine guns or missiles. The machine guns, from my experience, are very bad. The long startup time to fire, paired with the rather touchy handling of the jetpack, make it way too difficult to hit shots with, so go with the missiles here. And lastly, there is the JTO thrust, which you do want to buy to help you with taking off. Now, one of the biggest complaints of the jetpack from players is that it handles kind of like a clunky helicopter. And that comes from the fact that those players don't know how to handle it properly. What you're seeing now is a side-by-side -side comparison between the clunky handling that people describe and the strafe mode handling, as I like to call it. Right away, you can see not only how much faster the jetpack moves, but also how much more responsive it is to your controls. It can change directions and pretty much do anything much faster than without doing this. To enter the strafe mode, you simply have to hold the left and right bumpers if you're on Xbox, or L1 and R1 if you're on PS4, and then just move the left stick like you would normally, and you'll instantly notice the amount of momentum that you need to move decrease. Ideally, you want to go in and out of strafe mode as you see fit. The main use of it though is when you need to accelerate really fast after changing directions. This is shown off in this second comparison of a jetpack utilizing the strafe mode to circle the Maze Bank Tower versus someone who is using the standard clunky way of handling to circle the Maze Bank Tower. Since this requires a constant change of direction to go in the circle, it perfectly displays everything that I just mentioned. As you may have noticed from the Maze Bank comparison, you want to use the jetpack in first person mode when you are in any sort of combat scenario. Trying to aim the rockets in third person is not very practical because of the bad camera angle that you have. The reticle and your visibility of the target gets blocked by yourself. Going into first person mode not only gives you your view back, but also zooms in a bit so you can see targets more clearly from farther away because render distance is an issue on consoles. The missiles that you have are gonna be the only source of offense, so there are a few things you should know about them. First of all, the ammo count, you have a total of 30 missiles at your disposal before having to restock. However, there is a bug in the game that will limit the missile count down to 16 if you constantly spam the A or X button to fire them, so just make sure to cool it on the spam. The good thing about that though is that you cannot really spam them because there is a short cooldown between every two missiles you fire. It's identical to how missiles of the Laser, Hydra, and Buzzard work. The tracking on the thruster missiles are not very good at all either. Again, it's similar to the Laser, Hydra, or Buzzard missiles. So I do not recommend this vehicle for air-to-air -air combat as the missiles are really easy to dodge for anyone that is remotely aware of how to fly an aircraft. When it comes to defense, the jetpack of course has countermeasures, and if you took my advice that I had previously told you in the video, you'd have chaff on, but you don't come to an expert guide for obvious tactics like that. Your two biggest threats as a jetpack user are snipers if you are fighting against ground targets, or missiles from the Hunter, Charnabog, Strike Force, and Akula, as well as a plethora of vehicles that come with the top tier tracking missiles. Getting sniped out of the jetpack is a complaint that you'll often see, again by players not using the strafing feature. If you know someone is trying to snipe you, you have to take quick shots at them with your missiles and use evasive maneuvers in strafe mode to make yourself harder to hit. 
What I like to do is rotate in circles while moving in a circular motion myself. Just think of it like the Earth rotating around the Sun while at the same time rotating on its own axis. But instead, the Earth is your jetpack and the Sun is the enemy. It also helps to face your back towards them because obviously they can't shoot you through the back of the jetpack. This will make you a much more elusive target for whoever is trying to snipe you. But at the end of the day, it comes down to player skill. If the guy who is trying to snipe you has really good aim, you're probably going to get hit. Judging from my own experiences flying the jetpack though, I do not get sniped that often when I utilize this trick. For defending against missiles, we are going to be utilizing a trick that the jetpack has had since its release two years ago. For this, all you have to do is take Arthur Morgan's advice to John in Red Dead Redemption 2. You gotta run and don't look back. Well, maybe minus the looking back part, because if you do look back, you'll just see tons and tons of missiles blowing up right behind you, leaving you with no damage whatsoever. This works really good against top tier tracking missiles because there's no other way for you to avoid them if they happen to be locked onto you. I will say it does not work 100% of the time, sometimes you will still get hit by missiles using this trick. And if the missiles tracking you happen to be from either the Hunter, Akula, Strike Force, or the Charnabog, then they're always going to hit you and this will not work at all. If you're curious as to why that is, well, this right here is the size of the Presser Mark II missile and most other aircraft missiles. It's very small. This is the size of the Hunter and Akula missiles, and this is a Strike Force missile. My guess is that since the missile model is obviously bigger on the Hunter Akula and the Strike Force, it reaches the jetpack's hitbox a lot easier through the theoretical invisible wall it seems to have. As for the Charnabog, um, yeah, I think you guys get the point. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that size does matter. Rest assured, the missiles from the Presser Mark II, the Bruner 2000, the Stromberg, a Presser Mark I, Buzzard, Sea Sparrow, Laser, Hydra, Rogue, and there's a lot more that I'm probably forgetting, but all of those, the missiles will not be able to hit you if you're doing this trick. To this day, it's still unknown what exactly causes this to happen. I suspect it's a mixture of lag, desync, and potentially an invisible wall in the back, kind of like the Deluxo has underneath it. One last thing I wanted to mention before I end off this expert guide is that the jetpack is one of the only weaponized vehicles that lets you enter passive mode in it. In the Diamond Casino and Resort update, Rockstar made it so that you cannot enter passive mode in these types of vehicles anymore. The jetpack could be an oversight on Rockstar's part, so this may change once we get the next update here in a couple weeks. But until then, enjoy flying it around without worrying about getting harassed by pressure griefers. And for this reason, it's a vehicle that I recommend for anyone that likes to grind for money. But there you have it, you are now officially an expert at using the jetpack in GTA Online. I hope you guys found this video useful in some way. If you did, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.